All right, Ravens flock, what's going on, everybody? Hope you guys are enjoying your day. Hope you guys enjoyed that win. All right, let's cut it, okay? <laughs> Let me not even try to be this happy, perky person after a game like this. I'm so proud of what I saw defensively, but offensively, that was horrible. I was unable to live stream the game, and frankly, I'm glad I was. There's no way I would come into this recap video with this type of energy if I was to have live streamed that entire game because offensively, they were terrible. The only reason Baltimore won this game was because of the defense. And I get it. You're going to have games like this where nothing's going well offensively. You're not finishing drives. You can't find the end zone. Things just aren't going well on the offensive side. In those type of situations, you just hope your defense shows up. Today was one of those type of games, and the defense showed up in a fantastic way. The defense deserves all the praise in the world for helping us get this win because they bore the main reasons. Three turnovers. They got two picks on Baker and a fumble. That fumble actually led to the only touchdown we got in the game. You have to thank the defense because they did everything in their power to make sure we had opportunities to win in this game. And if they didn't play the way they played today, Baltimore was going to lose a the game. They had no business losing. Okay, so, uh, how do we get into this? Um, offensively, because we have to start off with that, let's start off with the bad before we get into the good. Offensively, nothing was really going well. There was only really one person that was showing up in the passing game, and that was Demarcus Robinson. By the way, congratulations to Demarcus Robinson. He had over 100 yards receiving today. I mean, the guy made a lot of clutch catches and key downs and helped move the chains. You would think Baltimore would take this and understand that this is a guy we have to get more involved, but I don't trust the offense to do it. I don't trust Greg Roman to do it. Because when when Duvernay was working out early in the season, we thought they would continue to give him more looks, give him more touches, get him more involved in the offense. Yet we watched today, and if, you, if you've been watching the last couple of games, we're not really getting Duvernay involved like that anymore. So again, what are we doing with our receivers? What are we really doing with our receivers here? It's like, we'll see them work out. We'll see things that are beneficial to them, things that are actually going well, and then we'll kind of move away from it. Now, all of a sudden, Duvernay's just doing nothing on his offense. Prochet's still invisible. Wallace, I don't even know if he was on the field half the time. Demarcus Robinson was the only receiver that was getting anything going. And then you have Mark Andrews, who was doing some Mark Andrews things. But you know, he's not 100% yet. He made some nice catches, but he's still not 100%. But yeah, Demarcus Robinson was the offense for the most part. He made a lot of great catches. Hopefully, Baltimore will understand that, hey, we got to use our receivers. But they don't learn. Other than that, it was the same old story with the Ravens. The same issues we've been talking about all season. The same issues we've been dealing with with the last couple of years are still there. These idiotic penalties. These stupid holding calls. The constant delay of games because they can't get set on time. The same old issues Baltimore has had over the last several seasons are the same old issues we saw today. And it was the worst of it. I mean, you couldn't get anything going. And these penalties continue to kill offensive drives. Even if we were getting some good plays done, it would have to come back due to a stupid holding call. It was ridiculous. I don't know when Baltimore is ever going to wake up and fix these issues, but it seems like they're fine playing this way. They don't seem to care. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens down the stretch. You're a 7-3 football team right now. You're in a commanding commanding place in the AFC North. There's a great chance you're going to win this division. So you're most likely going to make the playoffs unless you just start losing football games. But I don't know how far you can get with this sort of mindset when the same old issues, a team that lacks discipline and is constantly getting penalties that are taking away great plays, that's going to harm you in the postseason. When are they going to get this cleaned up? When are they going to stop with the delay of games? When is that going to stop? I have no clue. The play calling today was also not great. Um, this is one of the probably worst uh, play calling performances from Greg Roman's aspect because I did not think he called a good game at all. You know, that's that's not to say that he's been off all season. He's had a lot of great, uh, good. He's had a lot of games where he's given out some good play calling, some good game plans. So to, today just wasn't a good day for the for the offense in general. Execution was poor. Play calling was poor. A lot of things were just poor. Besides the bright spot of Demarcus Robinson, there was nothing really to look at. And there was some moments there. You could say Kenyon Drake had some moments. Mark Andrews is Mark Andrews. We expect him to play like that, so I didn't really count him. And then, you know, Justice Hill, he had um, like one or two good runs with him. So there was some things there that kind of were working and some things there that were beneficial and some things that 
were positive for the offense, but overall, it was just awful. I think the offensive line probably had one of their worst performances, and they got even worse once Ronnie Stanley got injured. So Ronnie Stanley, he ended up ha having his ankle injured because Lamar fell on it when he got sacked by one of the defenders. Because again, apparently, we just can't block on the offensive line at times. I think the offensive line today was poor. We, we really struggled to run the football, and in the past game, Lamar did not have a lot of good protection, and it showed. Now, Lamar Jackson today... Honestly, it was another one of those days where Lamar Jackson wasn't really special, but it's not like he was awful. Now, the interception, it is what it is with that. That really was a situation where the defender made a great play. Who the hell expects a D lineman to pick you off? And he put his hands up to bat it down, but somehow just caught there. I swear to you, because if you look at the play, Lamar was going for Andrews again over the middle, and Andrews was open. That pass was going to get there for probably a first down, and the defender just put his hands up, and it just stuck there, and he's like, I got a pick. That was his first career interception. What are the odds of a D lineman picking your quarterback? That's not very, you know, that doesn't happen very often. It's not exactly a consistent thing that happens or a constant thing that happens or, you know, a frequent thing that happens. So credit to that guy for making the play. He picked off Lamar Jackson. Way to go for him. But past that, Lamar Jackson today, honestly, he wasn't terrible, but he wasn't special. He did have the rushing touchdown and he finished the game with 31 rushing yards. But nothing could really get going. He also threw for over 200 pass yards. And I think he completed like over 70% of his passes because he was checking the ball down a lot. There was nothing really going in the pass game besides Demarcus Robinson. So he had a pretty okay day. I don't think he was terrible. But the offense today just was not putting up points. They weren't making a lot of big plays. And there wasn't a lot to really look at. When you look at how the game went, the first quarter, they didn't do anything. Second quarter, they got a, a field goal out of the two-minute offense in a situation where they probably could have got a touchdown if they handled it better, but they were wasting the clock too much. Then you get to the third quarter, it was a whole bunch of nothing. And then the fourth quarter, they put up 10 points, and that's kind of how they won the game. So offensively, they didn't really do much in this game to win. It was really just the defense that carried them. You know, Lamar Jackson today wasn't really special. Uh, Demarcus Robinson was the only one that stood out. Everyone else either made some plays here or just were bad like the offensive line running game wasn't great though they did total over 100 yards rushing today so good on them but there was nothing really special to look at in terms of the offense play calling again was not good so offensively they just didn't have it today defensively on the other hand they were everywhere they made baker suffer man they made baker suffer and he got some yards at the end of the day you know he was padding his stats when when it looked like everything was lost and at the end of the fourth quarter but other than that, the defense just locked up. They had nothing. They locked them up. They couldn't get anything going on the ground. They couldn't get anything going on a pass. So many three and outs. A bunch of punts were happening for the Panthers. I mean, this defense, this defense here, locked in. And in the second half, they forced three turnovers. The fumble was the most important turnover of the game. Marcus Peters causing the fumble. Marlon Humphrey picking it up. That put us in a great position to try and score. Kenyon Drake with the big run to get us to the goal line, and Lamar Jackson takes it in himself to get the touchdown. That helped us break this mold because it was a 6-3 game at that point. Once that touchdown happened, it became a 13-3 game, and I was like, yeah, we have a 10-point lead at this point. We're going to get this win. We're really going to get this win. So you had the, the fumble happen. You had the interception, the pick by Marlon Humphrey. Where he got Baker, he caught Baker lacking, and he just jumped the play, got the pick, and that was pretty much it. And then at the end of the game, another pick happened. The ball got batted up, and it was picked off by JBP to put the game on ice. So defense was everywhere. I cannot give any more praise to the defense than what they displayed today. If it wasn't for them, we are losing this football game. It's as simple as that. The offense struggled to move the ball at times. They couldn't do anything. And whenever they were moving the ball, penalties ruined it. We had a, a terrible, terrible face mask call on Morgan Moses. That was a 15-yard penalty. Completely took it away. Yet another play late in the fourth quarter. Lamar has a huge run to get to the goal line. Holding call. That takes it away. So many penalties ruined great drives for the Ravens. So these penalties were killing us. We weren't executing a lot other than Demarcus Robinson. Lamar was trying to get something going, but he himself didn't make a lot of great plays. The play calling today was not great in the slightest. It was bad. So nothing was working offensively. This is the time you need your defense to step up. And they did. You invested in the defense, and they showed out today. Now we did suffer some injuries, of course. Ronnie Stanley, uh, he suffered the ankle injury when Lamar fell on his ankle during a sack. And then um, Kyle Hamilton suffered a knee injury at some point in the, in the second half, and he got taken out. Both of them were questionable, so I don't know if it's severe or not. We'll probably get an update about that later, but... 
man, it sucks that that happened because Kyle Hamilton was playing a great game too, and he looked nice. He he definitely looked nice. But yeah, the de other than that, man, the defense just defense kept trucking. The defense kept trucking. The defense continued to make plays. They continued to show up. It was an ugly game. Like there's there's no way around it. It was an ugly game. Offense didn't do anything, and it was somewhat of a bad look because the Panthers are not a good team. Carolina is not a good team in the slightest. So the fact that your offense struggled to really get anything going, that's not a good look on you. And the thing that makes it even worse is that moving forward, your schedule is seen as one of the easiest, if not the easiest schedule. So no one really knows how to gauge the Ravens right now. The teams that were at the top, you were able to compete with them, but you couldn't finish those football games, so you lost. But now you're going to get, I'm going up against teams that are under 500, and it's like, you're struggling against the Panthers. Are you sure we can trust you in the playoffs when the moments really matter? I don't know. Maybe this was just an example of the Ravens playing down to the competition. Maybe offensively they were playing down to the competition. Maybe, you know what, it is what it is. I don't know. Maybe they just weren't 100% uh, today. I mean, we did hear about Lamar Jackson being sick and missing practice, though there was a lot of talks about that. Was he really sick or was he going to see his goddaughter? Whatever it was is whatever it was. I, I just... It just was not a good look today for the offense. To be struggling against the Panthers like that, it's not a good look. But at the end of the day, they found a way to win the game thanks to the defense forcing three turnovers and completely shutting down the Panthers offense. Now, Baker Mayfield today, honestly, he made some plays, but there wasn't enough to really get anything done. They had opportunities, but the Ravens defense was all over him. They made some great plays. That's all I really got to say. The defense just made... A lot of great plays, and because of those great plays, Baltimore was able to get the ball back, but offensively, we weren't doing anything with it, so it was a back-and-forth affair. Really, the two punters were going at it today. The two punters were going at it, and it was coming down to the wire to see which one was the bet was the um, better performance by either punter. I just, it just wasn't fun, and I, I just, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what, I really, I'm struggling to really assess this game because the defense played so well, and... I loved what I saw from them. But then on the flip side, the offense was so poor, and I hated what I saw from them. How am I supposed to feel about this game? Again, I will I will say it once again more. I'll say it once again. I'm just so glad I did not live stream this game because there's no way I would be able to come here with a clear conscience of mind to be able to give someone of a, of a recap to this because I would be pissed. I'm not going to lie. Even in a win if I had sat here for three hours and live seen that game and watched this offense, the conversations I would have had with everyone in the chat, we would have all been disgusted. We would have been pissed. And don't get me wrong. I don't like what I saw from the Ravens today offensively. That was an issue, but I didn't have to live stream for three hours, so it didn't hurt me like that. I watched the game, but I wasn't commentating over it, and, it, and I didn't have to go over each play and talk about, oh, this is not happening. We're not executing here. And the play calls that. I didn't have to do that for three hours. So for the most part, I'm kind of just chill. I'm cooling. It is what it is. But yeah, offensively, they just got to be better. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to say. You would hope that the Ravens would see how Demarcus Robinson has helped out. They're seeing how he's been productive over the last couple games. And maybe they'll start to look to get him more involved moving forward down the stretch because Demarcus Robinson has been making plays. Like he made plays last week against the Saints. And if Lamar didn't miss him, he probably would have a touchdown or two. And then against the uh, Bucks, he was also making plays as well. So we have to start getting Demarcus Robinson involved. You know, today was just a pure example of, of what he can do when you get him involved in the offense. If we can do more of that, we'll be in a good place. But we'll just have to see if Baltimore can build off that. There's a lot of hope. Okay, when it comes to the Ravens, there's just a lot of hope. There's not a lot of trust on the offensive side, but there's a lot of hope. Defensively, they continue to be the unit we expected them to be. They're making stops now. They're not giving up touchdowns. They're forcing turnovers. That's what they've been doing all year, and they're getting better and better and better at executing. They're getting better and better and better at making stops, and they just continue to do what they need to do. You know, they were getting to Baker all day. They, they sacked him a couple times. There was some good pressure. There was some real good pressure. You got to be happy with what you saw. They were just all over him today. And, um, yeah, defense was just doing what the defense is supposed to be doing. 
they're starting to come together at the right time. This is what you need to see from the Ravens' defense. And considering the teams they're facing moving forward, it's a great chance to see the build up that consistency that we're going to need when we get to the playoffs. Offensively, I don't know what you're going to do here. I really don't. Because Duvernay's production has gone down, despite the fact that he was one of the most productive guys for you in the first half of the season. His production's gone down. James Prochet is doing absolutely nothing for you. Tylen Wallace is doing absolutely nothing for you. Deshaun Jackson, we don't even know if he can stay healthy enough to help you do anything. Andy Isabella doesn't even play. I don't know why they picked this dude up in the first place. And Demarcus Robinson is showing some promise and he's actually being productive, but I don't trust the Ravens to be able to utilize him moving forward. And Mark Andrews is still Mark Andrews. Isaiah likely wasn't really utilized much today at all. So I don't know what to make of this offense, especially the pass game. What do I make of this team? I really don't know. I really don't know. We've been doing this whole assessment of uh, the Ravens' Super Bowl chances, and honestly, I don't think it goes up at all. Like, even if the defense played this well, it does not go up. In some cases, you can make an argument it goes down in their Super Bowl chances because their offense is such a mess that you can't trust them. And unless you're telling me this defense is about to be a historical defense in the playoffs, I don't know what you can do with that. And if that's going to be the case, then the defense is going to have to carry you to a championship because this offense is far too inconsistent. You got Lamar Jackson as your quarterback, but they play so slow on offense. How does that make sense? You've got one of the fastest, if not the fastest quarterback in the league, yet you play so slow on offense. Everything takes such a long time to develop. The schemes are so slow to get these receivers involved. They take so long to get set and snap the football. You have one of the fastest quarterbacks in the league, but it takes you forever to get a playoff. How can you have a fast quarterback and a slow offense? That doesn't make sense. But that's just the Baltimore Ravens for you. It is what it is. Anyway, Ravens got the win. They're a 7-3 football team now. They continue to improve their chances of winning their um, division and hosting a playoff game. Also, you know, it helps someone improve the chances to try and fight to get the number one seed because some of you guys apparently care about that. I personally don't care. It's about winning the division. Home, road, it don't matter. We won our two Super Bowl championships being road teams, so it is what it is. Though I would not sit back and talk about Super Bowl right now when it comes to this Ravens team because that offense has to figure out something. They need to grow an identity. They they need to figure something out. Their identity's not there. And yes, you can make the argument that Gus Edwards is not there. I understand. But still, all of your pieces, except one, all of your pieces in the passing game were playing. Actually, not even one, two, because you still have Kolar. So you had your guys out there for the most part because Andrews was still out there. Isaiah Likely was still out there. Demarcus Robinson, he showed up today. He was out there. Devin Dune was playing. Tylen Wallace was on the team. <laughs> James Brochet played some snaps when I saw him out there. So you have all your quote-unquote weapons there, but I don't know if this is enough pieces to get it done. Maybe you're going to have to rely on the run game. So it's going to come down to whenever Gus Edwards and um, J.K. Dobbins gets back. Now, Gus, they, he probably could have gone today, but they're being extra cautious with that hamstring because we already know how his whole injury situation went when he went down last year. So they want to be extra cautious with that hamstring and give him another week. I'm fine with it. Uh, J.K., some point in December, he'll pull up. We'll see what happens with that. Marcus Williams, at some point, he'll pull up in December, and we'll just see what happens there. At that point, you pretty much have everyone you need, and you'll see what happens there. David Ojabo also didn't play. They want to give him extra time to get more reps and more practice. So we'll just see what happens with that. But, yeah, Ravens find a way to uh, win a game against the Panthers, a team they had they really had no reason competing with in this situation. Like, you are the superior team. Funny enough, I said they win by 10, and they did. I expected it to be a little bit more scoring for Baltimore. I thought they'd put up 30. They put up 13. But I said they'd win the game by 10. And they won the game by 10. So I was correct. I mean, I made my prediction. I said they win by 10. Though I expected Baltimore to have somewhere between 25 and 30. And I expected uh, the, the Panthers to have somewhere between 15 and 20. But three points given up. I love that by the defense. I would have loved to have been wrong if it was 30 to 3. Instead, it's 13 to 3. I predicted 30 to 20. You gave me 13 to 3. I'm wrong about the scoring, but I am correct about how much they won by. So it is what it is. I'll take it. Anyway, Baltimore, 7-3 now. Panthers are 3-8. and They're pretty much out of... Actually, technically, no. They're probably still in the race for the NFC South because that division is not good right now. Granted, their chances of making the playoffs have dramatically 
fallen due to this loss being three and eight you would literally have to run the table finish nine and eight and just hope you win the division like that but yeah i mean they still technically have a chance they're not eliminated yet but we'll see what happens with the panthers that's their issue baltimore you're seven and three you're still first in the afc north you're fighting for the number one seed figure out what you want to be offensively what is your identity what are you trying to accomplish and figure out how to utilize this guy these guys you have on this team because you can't put these guys out there and not use them Figure something out, Baltimore, because the defense is starting to figure it out. And if the offense doesn't figure it out, you're not going to go far in the postseason. Anyway, that's all I got to say here. Congrats to the Ravens defense for getting us the win. Offense, you better pay them. Matter of fact, drinks are on you. Drinks are on you. You're going to pay for every defensive player's drinks. You're going to pay for their food, too. Matter of fact, I don't even know if y'all should get on the plane today with the way y'all play it. But, oh, get on the plane. We're at home. What am I talking about? What are talk? We're at home. But yet, yeah, y'all don't get to y'all don't get to go home. That's what I'm gonna say. Y'all don't get to go home. Forget getting on the plane, because y'all this is a home game. Y'all get to go home. Y'all gonna stay there and y'all gonna practice for an extra hour because y'all couldn't get anything going in the offense. Defense, you get to go home and celebrate. Offense, you're gonna spend another hour practicing, and then after that, you're gonna buy the defense some drinks and some food, and then everyone can go home. Because it's like four o'clock now. So you can practice till like six o'clock. After you've done your interviews, practice till six. Go get some food and some drinks. And then after that, everyone goes home. Anyway, I'm going to cut it here. I'm just rambling at this point. Appreciate you guys, and I'm out of here, man. Peace.